you everybody for taking the time out of your day to join me today as I train you on Banff National Park. I realise there's probably a lot of people on the call who have been to the park or maybe they're some first timers who haven't even been to Canada. So I'll treat the presentation to support both, both uh, agents that have been and agents that just need a refresh or haven't been at all. So just starting with our location in the purple area on your screen here, you can see that Banff National Park is located in the province of Alberta. And um, our airport gateway there of Calgary is also highlighted and Edmonton. Both of those airports are um, our airport gateways. And we neighbour the province of British Columbia, which uh, we're, we're connected with on a lot of itineraries, and to the north, the Yukon and Northwest Territory. So you'll hear a lot of Canada's west as itineraries when uh, in the trade when we put together multi-destination packages. They're predominantly the areas that we partner with for Banff National Park, as you can see by the geography there. So a bit of a snapshot on the park, an overview of the park itself. Uh, Banff National Park is Canada's first national park and it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The park currently spans 6,641 square kilometres of protected wilderness. We share that wilderness with a number of wild animals including bears, elk, wolves, deer and moose. And it is easily accessible from Calgary International Airport as I showed on the, on the, screen, the previous screen. It comprises of two main townships, Banff Township, which is the mecca of where a lot of the excitement and uh, uh, happens and a lot of the hotels are located, and then the small hamlet of Lake Louise, which is 45 minutes driving uh, just past Banff National Park, or sorry, Banff Township itself, and um, I'll take you into a little bit more detail on both those locations that make up Banff National Park as we go through. So it's a year-round holiday destination, the winter being our off peak meaning further savings for holidays in winter, but our seasons are year round. We definitely defend our summer business, which is our most popular time to travel. Obviously the Rocky Mountains, the glacial, glacial lakes and, um, and the, uh, the Columbia Ice Field, a lot of people come to see. And um, winter being our hidden gem of December through to March, a lot of savings to be made there when booking holidays, I'll take you through that. And then at shoulder being April to May. And um, temperatures too are playing into part with those months. Summer being 11 to 28 degrees, fall 5 to 7 degrees, winter minus 2 to minus 12, and spring 4 to 10 degrees. I do like to say though in the Rocky Mountains there are four seasons in one day no matter the season. So always tell your clients to pack in some warm clothes because it can start snow in summer. And, um, and then break out and be 28 degrees by the afternoon. So definitely multi-seasonal, no matter what season it is. Um, I'll touch on later too some shopping in the park. I like to put shopping in my opening snapshot because in the province of Alberta, there is no provincial tax. So when you're combining a Western Canada itinerary and you have clients who you think need to buy certain clothing or are interested in goods, Definitely let them know um, to save their shopping until they get into Banff National Park. There's, there's so many shops that line Banff Avenue, but there's no provincial tax, so their dollars go further in the park. I put the website on that page there, but please know also what I will be following up after the presentation. I'll have all these web links for you and further information and some flat sheets that can just reiterate some of these points. So let's start with getting here and getting around. International flights. We've got Air Canada who are flying daily from Sydney, Brisbane, uh, Sydney and Brisbane into Vancouver, and from there there's regular connections on the hour into Calgary or Edmonton, depending where your client wants to start. Calgary is the more popular area to get into the park, and um, Air Canada also flies four days per week uh, from Vancouver ex Melbourne. Then we've got Air New Zealand, which is considered a direct route as well because they do fly their metal um, into, daily into Vancouver, but you do fly via Auckland. And they use Air Canada as a co-chair partner once in Vancouver to connect over. Then Qantas is the other aircraft that flies their own metal uh, from Australia into Canada, but they only have selected dates, December and January um, into Vancouver to, travel, to cover the peak winter and Christmas period. And there they'll co-chair with either WestJet or Alaska Airlines over to Calgary. And uh, their flights are not operating for summer this year in, in June, July. However, Qantas has informed me that they're looking at launching them again for 2020. Then, of course, you've got the many airlines that service Los Angeles. And uh, from Los Angeles, all the Star Alliance and One World partners do connect into Calgary. It is a major international 
Airport Gateway. So once you're in Calgary, there are many options to get into Banff National Park. There's the Banff Airporter, the Brewster Airport Express, or self-drive. Now for your clients that do like to self-drive, all the, the, the Kalahari companies are within the airport, but they're just outside the terminal. But they are right there and easily, easily walking access to get the vehicle. Uh, no transportation is required to get to their car rental places at the airport. There is also the option of Rocky Mountaineer to travel from Vancouver and uh, into either Jasper, uh, Banff or Lake Louise. And I'll get to them later because I do know they still have inventory available for 2019. Um, due to putting on new gold leaf trains. So anybody interested in last minute summer packages for 2019, Rocky Mountain has availability. And once in the park itself, a lot of customers I hear do prefer transfers to attractions. So there's Brewster that will take you around, Banff taxis, and then tour companies, small group tour companies like Discover Banff Tours and Banff Adventures. I will elaborate on those further in my presentation. And then also, the Rome public transport system is fantastic. It operates just in the township of Banff, taking you to and from many of the hotels uh, to connect downtown, but also up to the Banff Gondola, the Rimrock Hotel, and Caven Basin up, um, up um, near the gondola itself. So it's a it's very uh, cheap and easy way to get around public transport-wise. For skiers, there is a ski bus that is aligned with your ski ticket, with the Ski Big 3 ticket, and that takes you to the ski resort. There's a web link there that I've got, explorethepark.ca. I'll include that in my follow-up information for you, just about additional transport within the park should you require that information. I add this next part, get a visa before you go, because we still have travellers who are not aware that the Government of Canada requires an ETA for all visitors travelling to Canada. This visa is only $7 and valid for five years, and I will also include that link um, as follow-up information for you. So now a snapshot on the townships, the two townships that make up Banff National Park, being Banff and Lake Louise. Starting with Lake Louise here, as I mentioned, it's 45 minutes on from the town of Banff, and it's a small little hamlet. There's not a lot of accommodation there, but there is a lot of attractions um, in the park around the Lake Louise area, namely the famous Lake Louise itself, which you can see here in this picture. It's a little bit fuzzy, I confess, and uh, that's the chateau that lines that picture there. Directly opposite Lake Louise, uh, the Lake Louise itself, is Lake Louise Ski Resort, where this photo would have been taken, looking down onto Lake Louise. And the, the ski resort of Lake Louise also opens in summer as a sightseeing uh, gondola that uh, uh, covers over a Dizzy Bear Corridor, which I will elaborate further on when I get to the activities. So this small town has uh, a few restaurants, but uh, mainly the restaurants are in the hotels and cities that you stay at. Otherwise, the dining options are limited to the little township of a bakery that is quite famous because it has, has a, had a grizzly bear walk into the bakery. Obviously, the smell was strong enough for it to lure the grizzly in. And otherwise, there's the station at a train resort. Uh, Lake Louise Ski Resort has um, uh, year-round has their uh, lodge open at the bottom for, for cuisine and otherwise the hotels. And here I'll take you through the snapshot of the main hotels in and around the Lake Louise area. The Lizzie, sorry, can I just stop you for one second? Yeah. Just a couple of people are saying that you're very quiet. Um, oh. So, yeah, it's not for me, but um, a few people are saying oh. you're, you are very quiet. Okay. So maybe if you could just speak a little bit louder. Yes, sure. Um, and sure. Okay. everybody just, yeah, turn your speakers up as high as possible and Lizzie will talk a bit louder and hopefully... Sure. You'll hear better. Louder. Thanks, Lizzie. Yeah. Thanks. But, please, but please tell me if I'm yet now yelling. I don't want to go from one extreme to the other. <laughs> okay, so I'll speak a little bit louder. Um, do tell me if I am getting too loud, though, because I don't want to go from one extreme to the other. So looking at the places to stay in and around the little hamlet of Lake Louise, the most popular here in the top left being the Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise. That is uh, a year-round hotel right on the lake itself, has the best views obviously of the lake. And also a little tip with this property is its rates are half price in winter. So uh, the Fairmonts are very popular and some are being peak, the rates are our peak. Winter you can have some great savings as you can in shoulder. So I highly recommend you having your clients look to visit 
um, in those shoulder or winter months where they can save some money if they're interested in those premium properties. Now, Deer Lodge is another fantastic property that's very close to the lake itself. It's only approximately 200 metres from the Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise entry, first entry point for the car park down on the main entry road. And um, that property, I would say, is more like a B and B. So the rooms are quite small and basic, but they they coach communal areas, really large communal areas where tea and coffee and sweets are served, and people can can mingle amongst that area. They also have one of the best restaurants in Lake Louise, actually at Deer Lodge, um, where they farm a lot of it's a lot of farm to table food, and um, highly renowned for for their restaurant and hot tub on the roof year-round again, and they've just undergone some renovations as well, so uh, another great property. Next here in Lake Louise is a bit of a hidden gem, and not a lot of people have heard or know of Mountaineer Lodge. It's very, very close to Lake Louise Township, and across the road from the, the main shops is actually Mountaineer Lodge, fully renovated new um, in, in a lot of new roofs that are really great for large family groups. They're very spacious. They've got separate rooms for the kids and separate rooms for, for adults. So a lot of them are two bedrooms. Um, some have um, modern kitchenettes in them. And also, to a lot of the public transport that goes around to the ski areas for your winter clients, that stops out, out the front of that hotel. And it's, um, it also has a full kitchen area for, for breakfasts in the morning. The only point I would note to you about that property is if you have any clients with uh, disabilities who cannot walk upstairs, you would need to request rooms on the lower level because they do not have an elevator in that property. But fully refurbed and very impressive with what I saw when I've done sites there. Next up on the list for the Lake Louise area is Emerald Lake Lodge. You may have seen this photographed quite a, quite a lot in many Canadian brochures. It is quite famous. It actually is in the province of British Columbia, neighbouring Alberta, but only 25 minutes from Lake Louise. So it's for your self-drive client. Your client that is happy to get in the car and explore a bit more wilderness, Emerald Lake Lodge is a, is a, is a wonderful option. And it's actually sister property, Deer Lodge. So like Deer Lodge, they have a very unique dining where it's a lot of farm to table cuisine. And next up on the list here, I've got Sunshine Mountain Lodge. Now Sunshine Mountain Lodge is year round and it's high in the Alpine at a ski resort called Sunshine Village that opens in summer also for beautiful hiking. Hiking tours that are very easy to, to um, to walk and, and the hiking tours cross over into British Columbia as well. Really easy, I should really call them walks because they're beautiful walks to see the wildflowers. And this property is quite high end, it's a very nice property, it has its own restaurant and it is for the winter market, our only ski in, ski out property. You catch a gondola up to this, uh, this hotel to get there, it is at least a 20 minute gondola ride but absolutely stunning and scenic. So if you've got clients who are into the wilderness and really want to be a part of nature with, with some luxury, Sunshine Mountain Lodge is a great property. Moving across here to Baker Creek, one of my favourites where I've stayed a lot when I visit the park, it is only for your self-drive client because no public transport goes there. It is along the Bow Valley Parkway which connects Banff and Lake Louise, one of the most uh, spectacular drives I've ever visited and a wildlife corridor uh, road. This, these, this Baker Creek has beautiful little log cabins, full kitchens, two bedrooms, single rooms, lofts, a lovely restaurant, and um, it's, it's perfect for self-drive families and it's year, um, all couples, and it's year-round as well. And then Storm Mountain Lodge, um, just beside Baker Creek, very similar again, self-drive only and very similar facilities. And also uh, Storm Mountain Lodge is another one that's renowned for its uh, gourmet restaurant that it has. In, uh, in the property, and that pretty much sums up your accommodation in the Lake Louise area and surrounds, which shows you how Lake Louise is more of the hamlet, small area, whereas Banff, when we get to it's where you mecca and you've got a lot more of the action and the properties to choose from. But I will say, a lot of the activities do take place around Lake Louise, so when you're looking to, uh, to put an itinerary together for your clients, I would say at least two nights in Lake Louise. Majority of itineraries that I see sometimes have one night Lake Louise, two nights Banff. You can easily spend a week in Banff National Park and our consumer research shows us that people get disappointed should they not because of the array of activities 
there are a lot of activities around the Lake Louise area. So definitely at least two nights in Lake Louise when um, looking to combine an itinerary in the park. So the, the Banff Township. This is where all the action happens and it is a big draw card to the Canadian Rockies. Located 1.5 to 2 hours from Calgary, traffic uh, dependent. The roads are always cleared in winter so that you don't have to think uh, snow on the roads, you can't get there. The road between Calgary and Banff is always cleared. And, um, and surrounded by beautiful breathtaking mountains, wide, wide range of accommodation. The great thing about Banff National Park is it's all flat level, so it's very pedestrian friendly and easy to walk around. Truth of the matter is you don't really need a car in Banff National Park because uh, unless you're going out to the wilderness and wanting some of those wilderness properties um, that are not accessed by tours, all of the tours in Banff National Park take you to the activities. So if diving is not your thing, do know that you'll be taken care of quite easily with the transport. Um, opportunities and very easy to walk around from all the properties and um, all the hotels as well. They also have the Rome public transport system I mentioned that has frequent stops to a lot of the hotel townships and also takes you to Banff Gondola and up to Tunnel Mountain. So there is an array of properties in, in Banff National Park. I chose to feature for this presentation some of the most popular that Australians have, have chosen and I'll take you through some reasons why. Um, but your preferred wholesaler obviously would have um, a wide variety and can custom for what you, you may like to, um, what your client may like. So Fairmont Banff Springs, very iconic, a castle in the Rockies, 10 to 15 minute walk from that Banff Avenue uh, picture that I showed you, multiple restaurants within the property, a beautiful Willow Springs spa within the property. Our golf course that backs on to the back of the property, which is renowned, which you have a lot of wildlife on the course. It really is the, one of the premium properties in the park. Again, from a rate perspective, look to winter and shoulder if you've got clients who are desperate to stay in some of these high-end properties and are mindful of budgets, you really can save hundreds of dollars by looking at that off-season um, for, for travel. Buffalo Mountain Lodge, that's sister property to the two properties I mentioned near Lake Louise, Deer Lodge and, uh, and uh, my, my um, and Emerald Lake Lodge. Sorry, my mind went blank for a moment there. And that, so they're also renowned again, farm to table food. Beautiful restaurants of farm to table food where they actually graze also uh, a lot of their own meats and grow a lot of their herbs. It's, it's a beautiful property and um, it's up on Tunnel Mountain. It's not down in Banff, the main street of Banff. So the Rome bus that I mentioned before can take, um, t does go up that way and can take guests up there. But it's not a, not a property that you can walk in and around town to. Bruce's Mountain Lodge I've put in there because it's a bit of a hidden gem. It's it's right in the heart of, of Banff and it's standard, your standard uh, hotel rooms, so your queen beds in a, in a in standard room, but the rooms are very, very spacious. And it is, when you've got clients who want to be right there in the snap of the atmosphere, it's got good leading rates, and it's right in the heart downtown. Everything is in walking distance. I've included Canalt Lodge as a newly refurbed property, as I was very impressed with this property for larger groups or families. It has been fully renovated. It's about a 10 minute walk, flat walk along Banff Avenue. It is on Banff Avenue, but it's on the outer skirts of the, the main hub of town. It's a, the road bus stops in front of it, which is three minutes into town or 10 minute walk, a flat walk if you wanted to walk, but the rooms are some of the biggest I have seen in the, out of all the hotels in Banff National Park. And they also have rooms that have full kitchenettes and, um, um, and like uh, full lounge rooms, beautiful property for large groups, large families. I was very impressed with it and also has Standard hotel rooms that are quite spacious. So don't overlook that because it is that little bit part out of town. I actually think for the larger families and groups, it is the, it's the best property I, I, that there is to choose from for the space. The two most popular properties I would say the standard for Australians, the next two on my list here, the Fox Hotel and the Moose. They are downtown, very popular. Uh, small uh, kitchenettes are in every single one of the rooms. And um, you can get two bedroom um, rooms as well. Again, in summer, very popular, so book early for, for those uh, rooms. But two popular hotels downtown. Both of them have uh, uh, restaurants in them that are chain restaurants, sort of like the Keg 
uh, we might have uh, uh, they might have the keg or or I mean some of the some of the restaurants that are a chains are linked with those types of hotels as well. But very easy walking distance to shops, restaurants. They're really right downtown. The Mount Royal Hotel is also downtown, fully fully uh, refurbed recently, so I put that one in there. And the Inns of Banff is an option I put in because they have apartment style properties. So if you had um, uh, clients who were looking for not your hotel but wanted apartments, which I do hear from a lot of the winter ski clients, the Inns of Banff is, is a good one. It is difficult to mention so many of the properties because Banff has a lot. But two additional I definitely wanted to add in there were not on the, the main call list that are a little bit unique for the area is the Rimrock Resort, um, which it would rival the Fairmont Banff Springs. It's higher up in the rocky area, up near the Banff Gondola. It's a AAA four diamond hotel, gourmet dining, a lot of weddings take place there. Beautiful, beautiful suites, absolutely gorgeous property. So if you're looking for an alternative to a Fairmont but very high end, that, uh, don't overlook the Rimrock. A lot of people have not heard of the Rimrock, but it is a beautiful property stunning views over the Rocky Mountains and over Banff Township. Then if you have a client that is wants to be one with wilderness, they want to go backcountry uh, via horse or hike and uh, experience cowboy culture, Sundance Lodge is a wilderness cabin. Uh, as a lodge, they have private rooms. The bathrooms and the showers are, however, shared. So it really is a rustic experience, but we do have a lot of people that do ask us about how to get out one with wilderness. And they have cowboy cookouts, um, ex uh, explore for wildlife, learn the, the um, learn the history and the culture of the cowboy era in the Rockies. Which it's a it's a great property for the client that looks for that type of experience. Let's move on now to activities. So I'll take you through winter and summer activities. There's so much to do in each. I haven't gone for a slide for each, but rather a snapshot. Looking at winter, Banff National Park has dog sledding, horse sleigh rides, ice skating, snowshoeing, signature property being a uh, signature experience, I should say, being Johnson Canyon Ice Walk. In the left hand of my uh, pictures on the screen there, the Johnson Canyon um, Ice Walk is actually a walk that's open year round. In summer, I call it the Johnson Canyon Board Walk because you don't need cleats. In winter, companies like Discover Banff Tools and Banff Adventure Centre provide you with cleats, a guided tour from Banff, and take you into this stunning uh, canyon where there's frozen waterfalls. It's an easy level walk and give you hot chocolate at the end. So that's a signature attraction in winter and amongst the sea. A new itinerary for us and a, a new package that some operators uh, are bundling is the heli tours with our ice bubbles. So what happens here is a company called Rocky's Heli will pick you up in either Banff or Lake Louise and transfer you an hour and a half north of Lake Louise to um, Athabasca Lake, which is where the ice bubbles are. They take you on a heli tour over the Rockies and a snowshoe, give you a hot gourmet lunch, and then take you for a two minute drive down the road, very close to their base provide you with cleats and you get to walk on this beautiful lake where the ice bubbles are. The lake is only 30 centimetres deep in the parts where you walk with the ice bubbles. So it's quite fascinating what you see. I like to explain it as a lot a Great Barrier Reef um, under a frozen lake because the ice bubbles, some of them, they look like coral. It really is a beautiful experience. So that's a new itinerary and some, I'll take you through some operators that have currently packaged that in some campaigns we're working on. Another, I put the rail in there as another winter attraction because rail is so popular with Australians wanting to travel to the Rockies that not a lot of people know that the rail is year round. So they have a winter transfer from Vancouver to Jasper, which is north of Bannock National Park, and you can do that train in either direction. There's regular transfers from Jasper on Sundog down to Banff National Park. So a, a rail winter connection is very easy to do with Banff National Park as well. For those who are selling skiing and snowboarding, we have three, three mountains in the park, uh, Lake Louise, Banff Sunshine and Norquay. They are not considered ski in, ski out purpose built resorts, which a lot of people uh, are, are accustomed to with, uh, with a Canadian skiing. What they're in now for is high alpine and stunning scenery aligned with a resort town. So being Banff or Lake Louise, 
a lot of people who stay at uh, Lake Weed uh, prefer to see just at Lake Weed because it's very close. But that tri area ticket does give you the option of all three each day. The bus collects you from downtown, from multiple stops, multiple hotels. It's included in the tri area ticket. And the ticket is called a Ski Big Tree ticket. There's also ice skating, and that can be on the famous Lake Louise, but also, too, there's ice skating routes downtown in Banff, and some of the hotels actually freeze off parts of their um, grass areas where you can skate on. Skating is a must. Um, at Lake Louise Ski Resort, which is quite, uh, Lake Louise Ski Resort, my pardon, at Lake Louise uh, itself, the Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise rents out skates or hockey sticks, and you can skate on the lake there. They have nets up as well for anybody who wants to have some fun games. It's a bit of a bucket list. You either canoe on the lake in summer or skate on the lake in winter. There's also winter wildlife tours operated out of Banff. We've discovered Banff Tours and Banff Adventure Centre. They take you out early in the morning or in the evening, and predominantly in winter you will see elk or bighorn sheep. And there's snowmobiling, tubing, and winter festivals and white Christmas. Now, this next slide here gives you an example of how some of, some of the hotels beautifully decorate themselves over Christmas. A white Christmas in Banff is quite extensive too. It starts as early as November because our winter season kicks off in November and the snow is falling. And these hotels will decorate themselves from as early as November. So if you have clients who want to experience a white Christmas and potentially uh, be home in Australia for Christmas, Bear in mind that a lot of the uh, Christmas decorations are up in Banff in November. It's also a great combination with Jasper National Park because the Fairmont Jasper Park Lodge has something called Christmas in November, where the whole month they have full Christmas buffets and Christmas cuisine. And you could tie that in with Banff, some of our festivals that are actually in November for Christmas. Our Santa Parade is in November, and we have a small Christmas market, which is really unique to the area of local local arts and crafts and cuisine. That also falls into November. So, and that's our shoulder, but it is winter. So uh, again, rates, very affordable, but a lot of Christmas activities, there's a good tidbit for you to know, do commence in November. When I mentioned festivals as well too, Banff is renowned for a festival called Snow Days, which is, includes something called Ice Magic. So Ice Magic is an ice carving competition that takes place right on Lake Louise. So the picture that you can see of the castle with the skaters in the left-hand corner is actually a castle built on frozen Lake Louise. And these, these uh, carvers have to compete in a competition from a block of ice and chainsaw, chisel, chip, into some uh, ice masterpieces that are then judged. And it is, it is absolutely spectacular to go and see Ice Magic. And I'll include in my follow-up a little YouTube video link so you can see how beautiful Ice Magic is. And it's right on uh, Lake Louise. If you're staying at the Chateau, it's included in your rates. But a lot of the other hotels offer it in your entry. It's cheap, like $5. It's, it's, uh, but it's a really great time to visit. In January being a peak time when Australians travel through the holiday, really great experience for families too. Lots of winter wonderland activities, not just for skiers, but also uh, for these um, non-ski activities uh, in the park. So moving on to our most popular time to travel, which is summer in Banff and Lake Louise. And this is where I reiterate too, we, um, it's been so, so busy in summer, you have to bear in mind that to get the rooms or, or um, activities, everything should be booked in advance and with as, with as much uh, time as possible. It is get very difficult for you to get your client's accommodation in Banff in summer at last, last minute. So let's start with some of the experiences and, um, and I'll also dispel some myths about summer that people get confused about. So most popular activities, are uh, horseback riding and wagon rides. Uh, again, those cowboy cookouts, they don't necessarily have to be overnight, but they can, um, they day trips. A Via Ferrata in Mount Norquay, if those are not aware of a Via Ferrata, it's a metal-like chain uh, wire, I should say, uh, nailed into the side of the rock, and you clip yourself on, and uh, not for the faint-hearted, I would say, is because you're, you're clipping and you're going from, from vine to vine of a metal, metal wire. Um, um, for island seekers, I would say. Uh, sightseeing gondolas, the most popular attraction. We have the Banff Gondola uh, in downtown Banff. And uh, also, to in summer, Sunshine Village, that ski resort where I said they have uh, the, um, that uh, 
hotel up in the mountain. That is also a sightseeing gondola for daytime hikers. And also to a bit of a hidden gem at Lake Louise Ski Resort. In summer, it actually opens up and is a protected grizzly bear wildlife corridor. So there's a lot of grizzlies that live in the high alpine of Lake Louise. So they essentially can't call themselves a grizzly bear sightseeing gondola. But if you were to look up Lake Louise sightseeing gondola, on their website, you'll see a little map with bear prints on it. And that shows you all the sightings of the grizzlies. So um, definitely a must-see is a Lake Louise gondola. And I would recommend, um, in hope of seeing the wildlife, you always go in the morning or the evening. And then up at the top of the Lake Louise gondola, there's a really easy and fun hike that you can do into bear country. And it's called Trail of the Great Bear. And it's managed by Parks Canada. And it's really good. You go in and you see um, you see uh, like hair on the trees where the, bear, where the bears may have rubbed their backs uh, up against the trees. And um, you can see bear beds where they lay on the grass. And of course, their experience guides you who are just know the safety of the area and, uh, and make sure you're always protected. Um, but again, as I mentioned, try if you are hoping to see a bear in that area, do go early morning or um, in the afternoon because animals are only out grazing. They're not out um, most of the time in the day. Now, the famous lakes, obviously, is a big reason why people go to Banff and Pato Lake, Lake Louise, Lake Minnewonka, Moraine Lake, and you can canoe and paddle on most of these uh, lakes and also the Bow River. And hiking, lots and lots of hiking opportunities. And when we say hiking, it's not like the Himalayas. It really is like the track that I see in the picture there on the, on the right-hand side. Nice, easy, gentle walks to see the wildflowers or the Rockies. Really, um, really pleasant experience. And then also, too, when I mentioned before dispelled myths, this has got to do with the Athabasca Glacier Ice Explorer experience. Looking at that picture there in the uh, bottom left-hand corner, I get asked a lot of the time to do this experience in winter. It is a summer-only experience. The glacier is closed from winter, and the reason it closes is because the weather gets extreme, and as does the winds and the colder temperatures. So clients wanting to do the Ice Explorer, which is very popular, please know it is a summer-only experience, and I highly recommend one booked well in advance because of its popularity. Also, too, um, attraction into the park is Rocky Mountaineer itself. Rocky Mountaineer brings many Australians straight into Banff National Park, and they actually have inventory still available for 2019, this summer, because they put on so many go um, new gold leaf uh, dome carriages that they have a lot more availability. So if you have clients who are trying to get some, um, get some uh, packages into Banff National Park for this summer, Look at um, and speak to your operators about what options they have with Rocky Mountaineer or Rocky Mountaineer packages. There is uh, a lot of options for availability even for this summer. Canyon tours, I mentioned before the beautiful Johnson Canyon. But when the snow's not there in winter, it's a boardwalk and uh, beautiful waterfalls. And the wildlife tours, they depart uh, daily from Banff as well. And there's always an informative tour because Banff's been very populated. You don't see a lot of wildlife downtown. You predominantly would see, as I mentioned, elk and bighorn sheep. However, there is a tour um, that is a guaranteed grizzly bear sighting that goes from Banff to a place called Kicking Horse with Discover Banff Tours. And they go and see a grizzly bear who's orphaned called Boo, and it is a guaranteed sighting that you see. It's a day trip from Banff with Discover Banff Tours. And also, too, from Banff itself, a summer experience, those who, who choose not to stay in Lake Louise, there are day trips available from Banff into Lake Louise. So I talked about not necessarily needing a car if you didn't, if you didn't want to necessarily drive or, or stay in somewhere remote and, and looking for your traditional holiday. There's many companies that offer tours. Discover Banff Tours, Banff Adventure Centre, Sundog Tours and Pursuit. And the general tours are day trips to Lake Louise, day trips to the Johnson Canyon, out to the Explore, um, Ice Explorer or, or Glacier Skywalk, or wildlife tours, and then also connections between um, uh, Jasper and Lake Louise. Now, for those wanting private tours, they do offer that as well. So um, I know Discover Bank Tours do a lot of uh, quotes for many of our operators in Australia on private tours. So they're the tour companies that you can actually look to that you're in and around to the sites and attractions. Now, I've included dining and nightlife for Banff because it really is a mecca for that. That's where people go for a lot of uh, the variety in uh, the restaurants, everything from breweries to uh, uh, 
restaurants that sell um, uh, bison, pizzas, um, vodka distilleries, there is a wide range. And then also to the APRE, those um, who might have a younger audience looking for APRE ski, APRE being the entertainment after ski, ski nightlife. Uh, there's so many bars, clubs and restaurants all in uh, Banff Township, a wide, wide variety. And I mentioned at the start, shopping. Shopping is great and the uh, it's not it's not just uh, tacky tourist stuff that people think about tourist towns. What I love about Banff is is a lot of local product. Rocky Mountain Soap being one of my favourite favourite uh, shops there. The Christmas shop is amazing, and also to uh, you can't go past buying yourself a, a bear claw, which is chocolate and nuts. Beautiful, beautiful shops line Banff Avenue and nearby Bear Street and high-end shops to adventure shops, brand name shops, museums, galleries, they all line the streets. And what I'd really highly recommend is giving your clients time to shop because one of the negative feedbacks, feedbacks I found when I uh, uh, had consumer workshops is they say those who have been felt they just didn't have enough time to enjoy uh, shopping at Banff. They left it to their last day thinking, I'll go and look at some shops before I head back to the airport. And within an hour, they've only covered three shops and then there's the whole time of Banff Avenue. So those who do like to shop around, please give your clients the time because it's, there is so many to choose from. I talked about the wildlife in the park before and what uh, is common. So Banff is home to 53 species of mammals. Bears are in hibernation in winter, not commonly seen in Banff Township themselves. As mentioned, the guaranteed sighting is at Kicking Horse. Um, on a day trip with Discover Banff Tours, or you could try the Banff, uh, at the Lake Louise Gondola uh, with a sightseeing gondola, or also to uh, their renowned to uh, be black bears, not so much grizzlies, on the Fairmont Golf Course. It's mainly elk, deer, and bighorn sheep that you'll see, and for self drivers as well, if they're not on a, um, they're not on a Discover Banff and its wildlife tour, I tell the self drivers to drive up to Panel Mountain, that's a lot where the, the elk and deer herds sit. Now, um, we've got wolves on there, but they're considered the most elusive large animal rarely seen. Um, probably a game for your self-drivers. Remember the road, the Bow Valley Parkway. So if you didn't want to take the Trans-Canada between Banff and Lake Louise, there is a road called the Bow Valley Parkway. That's what the Johnson Canyon is on. That is also a wildlife corridor. You can be very lucky um, at any time of day, any time of year. I was there recently and two baby moose crossed the road in front of me and then stopped and ate the salt on the road. That road is, is, is renowned to have wildlife, but uh, predominantly Bow Valley Parkway would be a self-drive wildlife experience and not a guarantee, but a beautiful drive regardless. So new itineraries. We look at Banff, as I mentioned, as a Western Canada, a great Western Canada combination product, and we know the park is not sold in isolation. So doing some research on why Australians want to go to Canada or, or what they're most interested in ticking off, we know that, uh, that Rocky Mountaineer is popular, VRL is popular, we know that the Rockies are popular, but combining them all also too with some bucket list experiences like Aurora viewing is something that we're looking at doing um, with various operators and campaigns in the marketplace. And I've listed a few that, uh, that I know have campaigns in the marketplace now that have specific itineraries, new itineraries combining all these key attractions that you can, you can um, reach out to. But I, I have only touched on a few. I should say that a lot of your, I'm sure many of your operators, your preferred operators, custom build, or if, if I've got wholesalers on the call themselves, I know they can custom build some of these ideas on what we see that might help stimulate your sales a little bit more to Canada and to Banff National Park. Starting with Adventure World, I mentioned the ice bubbles earlier and the new heli, heli experience for the ice bubbles. So they're packaged up here with uh, Rocky's Heli to have the ice bubbles, heli flight, snowshoeing. Uh, we can Banff National Park uh, doing a, a number of winter wonderland activities. And then flying into Yellowknife, which was the Northwest Territory directly above the province of Alberta, um, to experience three nights of aurora. And um, what I mentioned before too is um, access being important. To, uh, I might not have mentioned I've been my partner. You can fly directly from Calgary into Yellowknife twice daily on Air Canada or once daily on WestJet. 
from Calgary, but there are also flights on Air Canada from Vancouver. So it could be a circle where you could do your Vancouver, Victoria, um, up to see the Aurora, and then do a week in Banff National Park. It can be done either direction, but there are multiple multiple flights from Calgary, which is Banff and Lake Louise's airport gateway. So if you're looking for uh, clients who have the Aurora um, in mind, Banff Lake Louise can easily be, be packaged up with that uh, experience in Yellowknife due to the direct flights from Calgary. Scenic has taken advantage of our new, uh, or, or our focus on extending Christmas to start early in November. So having um, uh, Vancouver, Whistler, and Jasper for the Jasper Park Lodge with the Christmas in November, and then coming down into Banff Lake Louise to experience our Christmas markets. That's a new itinerary that's departing in November. And um, I've got five nights, but it's five nights in the park. Um, the rest, it's not just a five night itinerary, that's a typo there, I beg my pardon. Natural Focus Safaris also have a new and interesting tour with Banff National Park in winter, where they've got the five nights in the park doing all the winter activities that I mentioned, and then flying up again into the Northwest Territories, um, um, directly above Alberta, to experience a reindeer crossing in the Arctic township of Inuvik. So the reindeers uh, cross in a, in a large herd, and you go and see them via snowmobile. Another great combination there that Natural Focus Safaris has put together. Intrepid has launched an ice magic festival. I talked about the ice carving on Lake Louise and, um, and uh, that festival that takes place where you can view the beautiful ice uh, sculptures in January. And they've combined that with Vancouver, Whistler and Jasper for uh, Rockies and uh, um, BC experience with uh, the ice magic and the icing on the cake. And um, knowing that wildlife is popular, Memento have put together a, a an experience into the Rockies that has, they call it Wales and, Lo and Lights. So it's got your BC and then Banff and Lake Louise and Aurora Viewing all in one as a Western Canada combination. I um, haven't finished typing my Canada and Alaska travel connection line there, I see, but they've just launched a new Rocky Mountaineer package that has um, that is in summer. So it's, uh, it's August, September or October, goes into Banff National Park, includes British Columbia as well, goes into Banff National Park on Rocky Mountaineer, and then they've added three nights Aurora viewing in Yellowknife as well. I think it's called a lights and rail package, but that's Canada and Alaska travel connection. But as I mentioned, all these operators that the, uh, the listed on there, and I hope I haven't forgotten any, all sell Banff National Park and can tailor these itineraries. Or if I've got wholesalers um, on the call, maybe I can inspire you to consider some of these new itineraries and combinations yourself. So when I follow up, I'll have all these links for you, video links. I've got, uh, I've got a really good travel agent cheat sheet that I used at Canada Corroboree this year that shows a lot of the information that I've shown you in the presentation of activities that are open in uh, summer only, activities that are winter only, activities that are year round, places to stay, temperatures, and some useful links. So I'll hand it back to Charlie now to see if anybody's got any questions, and I, I hope this has been informative, and thank you very much for your time and joining the call. Lizzie, thank you once again. Fantastic presentation, so much information there. I'm sure everybody's taken away multiple hidden gems and, and new things, even if they were uh, very accustomed with Banff and Lake Louise in the first place. But if you'd like to know anything else right now, then please type it into the chat box and I will read any questions out to Lizzie. Uh, a few things, just trying to think what came up in the first webinar, what people were asking all sorts of uh, random yeah. things. L Lily says, thanks, Lee, no questions. Just wanted to say thanks for such an interesting and informative webinar. Yes, Lily, I totally agree. It was just so much information there and, you know, real useful information, <laughs> which is always good when you're uh, booking booking clients. Uh, Paul says, thank you, Lizzie and Charlie, much appreciated. Okay, Lizzie, I think you've covered it all this time. So um, we will leave it there, but of course we will be in touch, so you will get follow-up from myself and Lizzie to be able to find out more. Um, again, please join us next time. Lizzie will also be presenting for us on Northwest Territories uh, as the in-market representative for them, so please join us for that one and our webinars fortnightly on Wednesdays. We will see you next time. Lizzie, thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.